Good morning, Europe. It's Tuesday, the 15th of February. A very warm welcome to the programme. Let's begin by looking at our top stories. A critical window of diplomacy remains as the US and NATO allies warn a Russian attack could be tomorrow, as Kiev calls for calm and a show of unity. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz heads to Moscow in an attempt to de-escalate the tensions after reiterating Germany's support to Kiev. And Italy's constitutional court will be voting on the validity of eight referendums later, including the controversial issue of legalising euthanasia. Diplomatic efforts to head off what the US and NATO allies have warned could be an imminent Russian attack on Ukraine have intensified. With no signs of a Russian military de-escalation on Ukraine's border, it appears to be a make-or-break moment to avoid hostilities. But the White House remains on alert for all outcomes. It is a distinct possibility, perhaps more real than ever before, that Russia may decide to proceed with military action with new Russian forces continuing to arrive at the Ukrainian border and Russian forces staged all around Ukraine, an invasion, as we have said, could begin at any time. All the while, we are actively working to try to reach a diplomatic solution. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz is in Moscow today for what could be last-ditch attempts to persuade Russian President Vladimir Putin away from military action. Yesterday, Scholz was in Kiev with a message of solidarity for Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. We are prepared to have a serious dialogue with Russia about questions of European security. NATO and the USA made proposals to Russia that we support. Now we expect a reaction and answer from Russia. Later, the Ukrainian president addressed the nation in a bid to calm the population. We are told that February 16 will be the day of the invasion. We will make it a day of national unity. The relevant decree has been signed. We will put out our national flags, put on yellow-blue ribbons and will show our unity to the entire world. While in Moscow, President Putin and his foreign minister Sergei Lavrov were televised discussing the talks. The message appeared to be that Putin himself believes hopes for a diplomatic solution haven't yet faded. The U.S. Embassy will be temporarily relocating from Kyiv to Lviv due to the dramatic acceleration in the build-up of Russian forces. In his statement, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity is unwavering, but all the remaining U.S. citizens are strongly urged to leave Ukraine immediately. The EU ambassador said all the member states' embassies continue to operate from Kyiv. As Western countries step up their diplomatic efforts to avert further escalation and a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky issued a new decree declaring the 16th of February, the date when Russia might plan an attack as per some media leaks recently, the Day of Unity. He calls on the national blue and yellow flag to be hung on state buildings and other structures and for the national anthem to be played at 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday to strengthen the consolidation of Ukrainian society and its resilience. Sasha Vakulina, Euronews, Kyiv. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is uh, meeting uh, Vladimir Putin today in Moscow in an attempt to de-escalate tensions in the Ukrainian crisis. Ahead of the visit, Mr. Scholz uh, had warned that any further military aggression would have uh, heavy consequences for Moscow and stressed that Germany wanted to see immediate signs of de-escalation. Yesterday in Kyiv, after talks with uh, Vladimir Zelensky, Olaf Scholz called uh, for direct dialogue between Russia and Ukraine. The Kremlin uh, said earlier that uh, a meeting between Presidents Putin and uh, Zelensky will not be ruled out, but stressed that Moscow needed to understand what outcome it can 
expect. Uh, Vladimir Putin's spokesman said that uh, German and Russian leaders will discuss Russia's security guarantee demands, the Ukraine crisis and uh, the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Last week in Washington, President Biden clearly uh, said that uh, Nord Stream 2 would be blocked if Russia invades. Uh, but Olaf Scholz, who stood next to the US president, was unable to give uh, any details on this pipeline. Some uh, see uh, Olaf uh, Scholz's visit uh, as the last attempt to avert the worst case scenario, while others say that uh, the mission is less ambitious to keep uh, the channels of the dialogue open. Galina Polonskaya for Euronews from Moscow. Well, Olaf Scholz, the German chancellor, said that he had one important message to share standing next to the Ukrainian president in Kiev. He said Germany is fully behind Ukraine in this crisis. He then spent a good 20 minutes or so outlining exactly what Germany had done so far. For example, the huge financial support to the country since 2014. He also explained what Germany would do right now. And an example of that was unlocking even more money for Ukraine. And he crucially said that if Russia were to attack Ukraine, then he said we would know exactly what to do. He indicated that sanctions had been agreed and were ready to be imposed immediately after an attack by Russia on, on Ukraine. He also said that these sanctions, these severe consequences, is something that he would bring with him to Moscow on his next part of this trip and show Vladimir Putin exactly what would happen if Russia does attack. Jonah Kelgren, Euronews, Berlin. Donald Trump's longtime accountancy firm has cut its ties with his business, saying that nearly a decade's worth of Trump's filings should no longer be relied upon. The accountancy firm Mazar says it will no longer provide any new work for the Trump organization. The move comes amid ongoing criminal and civil investigations into whether Trump illegally inflated the value of his assets. Pharmaceutical drugs are polluting rivers worldwide. That's according to a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Researchers surveyed more than 1,000 sites from the Thames in London to the Brazilian Amazon, Delhi and New York. Paracetamol, antibiotics and an anti-epileptic drug have all been found posing a threat to wildlife. A pair of lovers caught in a tender embrace from 2,500 years ago are to get some TLC from Italian cultural officials. On Valentine's Day, an 18-month project began on the world-famous lovers. The reclining spouses, fashioned out of delicate terracotta, are being offered an anti-seismic platform as protection from the threat of earthquakes and traffic. Tonight, Paris Saint-Germain will be facing Real Madrid in the Champions League, with both teams looking to secure an advantage in their first leg of their last 16 tie. This is a crucial match for the French giants, who are desperate to finally lift the European Cup after being finalist in 2020 and semi-finalist in 2021. But the game against the 13-time winner Real Madrid will be tough. No hay favorito. It's a knockout game that could also be the Champions League final because of the name of the two teams, the players and the quality. Paris has been waiting more than 50 years to win this title and we are the aspirants. Both teams have some of the best players in the world and will probably see two of their star members coming back after injuries. That is Neymar on Paris side and Madrid's Karim Benzema. After meeting in the Parc des Princes, the two rivals will face each other again at the Santiago Bernabeu for the return leg in three weeks. Still lots more to come on the programme. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few moments.